The scallop, an attractive shellfish, lives on the bed of quiet seawaters in several different parts of the world. The coast of Maine, USA, parts of East Canada, France, the British Isles, Japan and Australia, particularly in Tasmania. On the D'Entrecasto Channel, lying between Tasmania and Bruny Island just off the coast, the fishermen work from little ports along the bays. Here they come and go with their catch, starting at daybreak and often working until nightfall. Each vessel is high powered, both for fast travel to the shell beds and for continual slow running while dredging. The D'Entrecasto Channel, over 30 miles long, is named after one of the early French explorers who brought his solitary band of seamen across these waters towards the end of the 18th century. Today, about 80 boats and over 350 people work in the scallop industry every year. The season is fairly short, lasting for three months of the winter, a time when other fish are not so plentiful. Behind each vessel, two dredges are towed by strong steel ropes, which may be 40 fathoms long. As the dredge is slowly drawn over the seabed, a sharp blade scrapes the scallops into the wire bags. The catch is hauled to the surface by a winch, driven by the engine of the boat. A tray in the stern is built especially to take the scallops and will be removed at the end of the season for normal fishing. The men now sort out the small shells and throw them back into the water to allow them to grow to full size. When each boat is laden at the end of the day, the crew bring the haul into the local jetty. It is very often a base for a number of vessels, but some fishermen have their own jetties with cottage and sheds attached. When they have made fast, unloading begins at once. Although there is a limit to the amount of scallops which can be taken, the channel produces the greatest quantity for any one district in Australia. Opening the shells is the work of a skilled tradesman who cuts deftly through the muscle tissue to expose the milk-white flesh inside. Experienced splitters, including women, can open up to a thousand shells an hour. Sometimes scalloping is a family affair. While the men are out in the boats, the wives and daughters are busy in the sheds, preparing the fish for transport to one of the several depots. At these depots, located mainly in the city of Hobart, the scallops are sealed into packs and shock frozen for 24 hours. Each year, one million pounds of flesh is produced. Most of this goes to the local market, but a fair quantity is exported to the mainland of Australia. The scallop has a number of natural enemies, not the least of which is man, who has attacked it in various situations from the tete-a-tete -tete to the public bar. In contrast to the white man's eating habits were those of the dark-skinned aborigine of long ago who ate by his fire on the beach. He dined with such sincere purpose that he left behind great heaps of shells, sometimes 25 feet high. This enthusiast perhaps won't do as well, but he certainly seems to be trying. 